Raise your hand if you consider yourself a leader. All right, so I want you to hold on to that thought for just a moment. A few years ago, I was in an Uber, and at some moment, the driver turned down the radio, looked in the rearview mirror, and he asked me what I did for a living. And so I told him I taught leadership and communication skills, and he goes, oh my gosh, he goes, what programs can I go through? I'm not a leader. And I remember like taking a leaning back and, and looking confused because I think everyone's a leader. And so we had this long conversation about what leadership is and how leadership is really about influence. And I got to the hotel and he gives me my bag and he goes, hey, I have influence. He goes, I influence the people who get in my car every day, my family, my friends, people on the streets. And then he leans in and he goes, I am a leader. So this is what I want you to know today. So regardless of whether you raised your hand or you did not, regardless of whether you have direct reports or you don't, I want you to know that you are a leader because you have influence. But it's what you decide to do with your influence that will make all the difference. I am an executive leadership coach and People are always asking me, what does that even mean? And so I always tell people that my job is to really just create a safe environment for people to, especially leaders, to tell the truth about how they're showing up, how to get out of their own way, and really to communicate more effectively in both their personal and their professional life. Leadership is not about you, but it starts with you. And if you want to be a great leader of other people, you got to first be a great leader of yourself. A CEO called me two weeks ago, and on the other end of the phone, he said, Justin, I need some help. I'm tired. And it just sounded like he was searching for something. And so I asked him, I go, what is it you're really searching for? And he paused and said, happiness. And can't many of us in this room relate to that? Where at some point in our life, we got busy being busy, or we put the people we love the most last. And it's in those moments that we've got to really have the awareness to take a step back and answer two really important questions. And those two questions that we're going to answer today are, who am I? And can you answer that without any title or accolade attached to it? And the other question is, how do I authentically want to show up in the world? Yeah, you know what's interesting? Everyone's like, oh, you're a motivational speaker. I'm like, no, it's not my job to motivate you. It's your job to motivate yourself. But I hope if I motivate you in the process of all this, great. But my job is to really challenge you to think differently about how you're showing up and then having you commit to making some different choices. I just got out of a program with Justin and he is so high energy and so engaging and funny and lively with his stories and with his energy and humor. It was awesome. I look forward to seeing Justin when I'm sitting in the audience. It's actually uh, one of the few speakers where I'm excited to sit down and watch the entire message and he's very interactive with the audience uh, which i really enjoy and he gives me things that i can take home right away and use justin has a great talent and a great way to relate to the audience with humor with with reasoned uh, arguments presentations if you will i appreciate listening to justin over 65 percent of how we communicate is nonverbal, but most leaders have no clue what their body language is saying or doing or how they're being perceived by other people And I'm never going to be one of those body language people to get up here and tries to teach you how to analyze and critique everyone else's body language. Because if all you do is worry about analyzing and critiquing other people, you do not hold the space to connect. And leadership and great communication is all about connection. But there are a few body language things that we're going to practice in this room today and that I want you to really leave here being able to apply. Number one is body language is not about you. It is about perception. And our jobs as leaders is to manage that perception. That's what we can control. And number two, there are four power zones on your body that display either power and confidence or empathy and collaboration. And great leaders and communicators know how to flex their style so they can meet people where they are. One of the things that I love about what I get to do is the results are not just about work and their professional life. But if they do the work that I really focus on in these workshops, it's really going to transform their personal life as well. And so the results come into being more trust in their relationships um, instead of these transactional um, relationships that they might carry. Because if you show up that way at work, you show up that way in your personal life. And when we create better trust and dynamics in, in every relationship, I think everything else in our life improves. So organizational culture improves, engagement improves. More importantly, that all happens because leaders take responsibility for their energy, and that's really at the core of what I teach. We must be willing to slow down, look at ourselves in the mirror, tell the truth about how we're really showing up, 
and make some bold new choices to show up just a little bit different. If no one tells you they believe in you, I want you to know this. I believe in you. I believe in the leader that you are, and I believe in the leader that you can become.